Well, we're up here on Last Mountain Lake, which you know a lot of people have described this to me as is the some of the very best drive to walleye fishing you're going to find in Western Canada. Now we came up here, and obviously, you know, a lot of places, you know, dog days of summer, the fish can slow down in July and August. I tell you, what, this is a place where the walleye fish just keeps on keeping on. And so we're fishing out of GNS Marina, and we're with Rob, who's operated and guided out of here for many, many years, and so just a great expert, you know, as far as getting really good information on this lake. Perfect person to fish last mountain with here. So excited to be here. Excited to spend the day with you here and excited to get in your mind here and learn a little bit more about this fishery. Well, glad to have you, that's for sure. It's a great opportunity to fish this lake and uh, you're going to see some good fish over the next day or two. It's really windy out here today. You can see the wind blowing through here. We made a pass down this deep contour here pulling lead corn crankbaits. We caught a fish, but we were marking a lot of fish. So we're going to go right back up through here with bottom balsers here and see what happens. There we go. There, that's a little bit better one. Slow us down here. How deep? 28, 29 feet. Eh? Yep, right on the 28. Yep. Boy, they're right on that edge, yep. just like you described. Yep. Boy, these fish fight hard. This is impressive. <laughs> and they got some weight to them. <laughs> the way that fish fought, I thought that fish was going to be bigger than that. Here we go. We got a good one. Uh, <laughs> they got surprise some muscle. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Boy, I just love the color on these fish. Look at that. Just... That butterfly blade out of her. Yeah, look at that. That's just a... That's a beautiful walleye. They're sad, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They are. And they just got that golden... Oh, they're just beautiful. Whoa, there she goes. Once we get into our summer, like into July, as like we are right now, these fish start to move on to the steep break lines on the lake. And this lake is, there's miles and miles of break line, and that's where we're fishing. The, the, the main lake, main shelf starts at about 21 feet and then it drops down into like literally 30, 40, 50, 60 feet of water. These fish are holding on the top of that break, you know, anywhere from 21 to 26, 27, 28 feet kind of thing. And we're just working these edges with bottom bouncer and crawler harnesses and uh, watching our depth finders, seeing the schools of Cisco going through and underneath right away you see those big arcs or there's the walleye hanging right underneath them. So we're just following this break line and we're catching fish. There's another one. How's that one feel? It's a little better, still not a bit, not a giant, but it's okay, better fish. Well, I will uh, net your fish when you're ready. Got a little bit more weight, this one. Something tells me that you Canadians will boat flip walleyes that Americans would put a net under. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice walleye. There we go. Yeah, that's, right. a, that's a porker. <laughs> yeah. Nice work there, Rob. <laughs> nice fish. There. They're pretty. That's a nice one. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that hump on the hump forehead. on their head. They're so thick. <laughs> yeah. Holy beauties. These fish look like they've been eating. Okay. There he goes. 
gonzo. All right. Now this particular summer, we've had so many cold fronts that last three, four, five days where we don't get a lot of precipitation, but we get just cold weather and strong winds. And sometimes when you get these cold fronts, you have to react to the fish and sometimes you have to slow down. And so when you do have to fish bottom bouncers slow, say a mile an hour, here's a couple things that are important. A lot of times when we are fishing slower, we're holding onto the rod and we're setting the hook. The other thing is, is as you slow down, you want to use a heavy enough bottom bouncer to find the bottom and keep that line at about a 45 degree angle. Because if you let out too much line at slow speeds, the bottom bouncer is going to tip over. So you just want just enough weight, enough line out to barely tick the bottom. A rule of thumb is one ounce for every 10 feet of water. So if I'm in 10, 12 feet, one ounce will work fine. If I'm in 25 feet, two to three ounces will work fine. But basically you just want to keep your line at a 45 degree angle and just tick the bottom. I like to use a bait casting rod and reel setup. I like to use a six and a half foot rod and I like to use a medium heavy action. I like to use an extra fast tip. Now I like to use that stiffer rod action for a couple of different reasons. When I'm holding onto the rod, I just feel like that rod action built up to the tip allows me to get a better hook set, especially in deeper water, especially if I'm using heavier bottom bouncers. The other thing is if I'm putting these in the rod holder, especially if I'm fishing on rocks and snags, that stiffer rod action will just pop that bottom bouncer through the rocks better. If I use too soft of a tip, that bottom bouncer will have a tendency just to load up into snags. So I get hung up more often if I use too soft of a rod. So don't be afraid to use a stiffer rod. As far as a bait casting reel itself, we work with Shields where Shields really develop what I consider is the ultimate bait casting reel specifically for bottom bolsters and spinners. And then it's got a line counter, and it's got a flipping switch. So that way you can let out line, adjust line with just one hand by just turning the reel handle and hitting the flipping switch. And also the line counter reel enables you to not only just repeat what's working, but also allows you to fish more rods in the boat by staggering lines. And since you let out more line out the back, less line out the front just to keep your bottom bolsters separate. And so if you're looking for a reel specifically for bottom bouncers, this is called the Coldwater Series. It comes in a left and right handed model. And you can find this at Shields. You know, and as far as the line for using bottom bouncers and spinners, I like to just use a 10 pound fire line. It's probably my go-to line most of the time. I know some people like to use mono. I like to use braid and just use my drag to fight the fish. But the big thing is with your snails, make sure that you tie these snails with heavy enough line in the sense that if you're pulling a bottom bouncer at two miles an hour to a mile an hour, there's a big range in speed, but only if that snail tracks true behind the bottom bouncer. So if you try to use too light of line, too, too light of monofilament on your snails, whether you're using a plane hook or a spinner harness or a butterfly blade, you're gonna get a twisted up snail. And so don't be afraid to use a 14 pound snail when you're using mono, whether you're using a rig or using a spinner because it'll just track true behind the water and that presentation is gonna look a lot better to the fish. Oh, this is a better fish. Got one. Got one? Yep. All right. Feel like a good one? Yeah, a little bit better. Still right. not a giant, but a little bit better. All right. Took a little line. All right, I'm coming with the net here. Good size head shake. All right. Yeah, he's taking a little line. Oh. He's a little better fish. <laughs> yep. There. Oh, this is fun. He doesn't want to come in. Boat jolt your wrist out of. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, yeah, he's a better fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see yeah. it. Yeah. We'll be nice to it. We're getting close. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a nice yeah. one. There we go. <laughs> wow. There's the last mountain football. That is beautiful. Beautiful. There we go. Nice work. Uh, nice work. Hold on him here. There, that's a fatty. Look that at that, is baby. A fatty. Woo. That's, that's a fatty. That's a I can't get over just hold. Look how, at that, eh? How yeah. high, how tall yeah. these fish are. <laughs> Goodness. That's a beauty. They are gorgeous. Yeah. This one will make lots of babies. Nice big yeah. female. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll get her in the water here. Oh, there she goes. Gone. All right, nice work. Awesome. That was fun. We're using these butterfly blades, which 
you know, a lot of times when I'm pulling fast or if it's really turbid water, algae blooms, you know, I still like to use a spinner blade, but whenever you're going really slow, these butterfly blades turn at really slow speeds. You know, you can get these blades turning at about 0.7 or so. So that's the key to this. See here, some of these come with floats. I'm pulling them faster. A lot of times I'll, you know, experiment with soft plastic like the eye candy or some gulp. But at these really slow speeds, I like to, I still like to use live bait, but that's just deadly whenever you gotta crawl along on these fish. Trying to keep it about a mile an hour seems to be kind of the sweet spot where these fish are hitting. There we go. Oh, that was a fun strike. <laughs> wow. Staying down nice. That sun looks like it wants to peek out a little bit. <laughs> Fish is waking up now. We're marking more fish too. We're going over some fish right now. Oh, here she comes. That's a nice one. There we go. Give me that pliers back there. Fish off here. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And a lot of these fish are just cookie cutter, you know, just lots of, I mean, just the sheer number of 22 inch fish are in this lake is unbelievable. 22, 24 inch fish. Some smaller, some bigger, but my goodness, what a great average fish. Get her in the water. There she goes. Back in 1961, when I was born, this park was developed. They planted every tree that is here and made the campsites. And back in 1991, the provincial park put out a tender to build a bait and tackle shop right after they had built the marina in here in 1989. And we put in a tender and we were successful on the tender, so we built the marina store here and that was our start of all the outfitting in in 1994 we built the cabins so now we're full service outfitter we've got cabins to rent we've got boats to rent we've got full guide service for both fishing and bird hunting on last mountain lake got him got him yep all got right him. feel like a good one you don't dare Another say. last mountain football. <laughs> he's not a beast, but he's still a nice one. Yeah, yeah. they're all nice, but he's not a rod stopper. <laughs> but he's good. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. a trick question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Giving a good fight. There he is. Oh, oh my! Oh. Almost knocked there him out. Well, there we go. Oh, nice. Oh, dandy. <laughs> That's a respectable fish. fish. There's another nice last mountain football and in that 20 inch range. This is typical, there's a lot of this size. On, on last mountain you, you can average depending on what the bites going on but you can get a lot of big fish could be in that 20 26 27 up to 30 but typically you know you're looking at about 20 25 fish a day you know with a lot of 19 to 23 24 inch fish really nice average size and they're all fat really girthy Hey, look, Rob, we got another boat out here. It's going to get crowded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is crowded now. There's two of us. I know it's the uh, end of July and uh, <laughs> middle of the week, and the wind was blowing probably 25 miles an hour or more this morning, but I couldn't believe it this morning. There wasn't a single rig in the parking lot at the marina. 
unbelievable. It's like traveling back in time. Have a lake like this and you're the only one out here. Unbelievable. One thing that we'll find once we get into the heat of the summer, this lake will develop a pretty solid thermal cline. And typically that's going to be around the 30 feet. So we'll find a lot of our bait fish hang out there. And then sure enough, there's where the walleye are. They're right underneath them there. So typically a summer depth. When the heat of the summer, especially in August, uh, we'll find a lot of fish in that 26 to 28 to 30 feet of water. So great place to look for them. Watch for the thermocline, then you're going to find fish. Fish. Got one? Yep. All right. Well, I'll get the net here. Trying to stay down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, nice, nice one. Oh, <laughs> pretty nice one again. <laughs> oh, good he stuff. fooled me a little bit. When it is windy, I tell you what, that's one of the situations where I really like to run a tiller or like to back troll in the sense that when it's windy, and if you need to stay at a specific depth or a specific contour line, you can just creep up, you know, and back troll and really stay on spots. And you just, it's really a great way for boat control versus trying to do that with a bow mount in a big boat can be a lot more difficult. And so in some ways with a tiller boat, it's a little bit more uncomfortable getting from point A to point B in a tiller boat sometimes or a little wetter ride. But once you get there, you start fishing, you know, it's really nice. But, you know, you, you do what you can when it's windy. As the wind laid down, you know, we caught fish all day. What really struck me about this particular lake is it's, there's not a lot of what seemed like offshore structure. You just basically have this contour, it's almost like a big ditch. And you have this contour dropping down into deep water, which that deep water enables this lake to have a thermal climb. We have this big cisco population. These fish just move up and down this lake chasing these ciscos. And so it's really a deal where, you know, I think it'd be important to drive around and mark fish or use your electronics in the sense that there's just dead water with no clutter, no bait fish, no marks. You just, if you have a mile of that, you just keep moving. You don't even stop. There he is, got him. Got him? Yep. Oh, wow. He came back and hit it again. Yeah, yeah, you're starting to fire up a little bit over here. <laughs> I'll gladly net your fish, though. Fishing. That's oh, a nice that's one. A this is a beautiful dandy. walleye. Yeah, that's, that's a, a dandy. beautiful walleye. That's a gooder. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice baby. Nice work, Rob. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a good one. If you have one of those little cabins open for the rest of the summer, you you're might in? just stay here. <laughs> 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 that's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's a beauty. There. Look at that, maybe. That is a nice one. <laughs> okay, we'll get her back in the water. There we go. She's ready to go. Ooh, no problem. Awesome. This is fun. <laughs> If you're going to catch fish come mid-summer, July and August, you should probably learn how to use a bottom bouncer. A bottom bouncer is such an effective tool. You know, when these fish spread out, there might be one fish here, 20 yards later, there are fish over there, fish 30 yards down. You know, they spread out in a general contour and a specific depth. That's where bottom bouncers really shine. And so not only can you use bottom bouncers to find fish, but when these fish are spread out, you can cover the distance to get to the next fish to catch it. And so bottom bouncers, whether you're using a plain snell, butterfly blades, spinner harnesses, it doesn't matter. Bottom bouncers is a very effective tool that's going to catch walleyes come midsummer. There we go. There we go. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, there we go. Oh. Slammed it. Fish is about dragging me out of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, these fish are so strong. <laughs> Any predictions? You know, you just don't, <laughs> all I can tell you is you don't tell them what to do. <laughs> 
be able to see it pretty soon. Oh yeah, this is dandy. Nice, nice fish. Oh, nice fish. that's a beautiful walleye, Rob. <laughs> beautiful. Put us back in gear here. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Good job. Wow. Big old teeth on her are getting caught in the net. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous walleye. Woo! <laughs> That's beautiful. Get her in the water here. There she goes. No worse for wear. Fun stuff. Nice fish. This is fun fish. <laughs> And we're not even having to work hard. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, nobody said fishing's supposed to be hard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs>